cap anyway, obviously. You've got the heels underneath. So the cap colour, the cap texture, cap size, gill colour, gill texture, that's all important for identifying. This is called, if this was a plant, that would be called a stem, but in a mushroom it's called a stipe. A stipe? So, yeah, a stipe is like a stalk. Yeah. You often check in if it's got a bulbous base, so sometimes the base can be rather fat and thick, and this one isn't so thick. And, and also, some of them can have a, a ring, so it's a little bit of tissue going around there. And originally that would have been a closed cap, so that would have been covering over to the gills, but as the cap grew, the ring didn't change in size, so it got snapped off, and then it stays around the outside. In general, outside. there's about, there's just less than 50 species that are really poisonous and bad. There's less than 50, somewhere around that, maybe a bit more or less, that are edible and good, and everything else in between is just... Just 50-50? Yeah, but then again, there's like, there's probably a couple of thousand ones in the middle. And what is in the middle? Like it's not really palatable. Yeah, so there's different reasons. They might not be palatable, they might be a little bit sickening, they affect some people different to others, and also other ones then just fall apart when you cook them. So they don't add anything to your meal except mush. So. Is that where the, the name comes from? Mush. M mush. <laughs> where does the name come from? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so the, exactly the, 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 the actual fungus or the stronger part of the fungus, this is the fruiting body, so the stronger part is, is the mycelium. 99% of it is under the soil in mycelium. It's kind of that white filament I showed you on the leaves back there. So that's there. And then someone said, you know, you usually have your spots for these things, so you come back next year and the year after that. It's because the majority of the fungus is still there. It's just been underground. So just because there's no mushrooms doesn't mean there's nothing there. There could be chanterelles all over here, but they're just not producing fruit bodies. And this is a chanterelle No, that's not a chanterelle. A chanterelle is an edible one. I was just using it as an example. Right, so this is a really nice one. Fungus. It's great for kids as well. This is called a jelly baby. Uh, you pass it around, if you hold it, you'll figure out why it's called a jelly baby. So their thing is called Mycena. Yeah. So that's the bottle cap. This is a thing called Crepidotus. They're called brittle gills. So the gills are very brittle. That's the genus is called Rusula. That's a thing called an earth ball. Hebeloma is a poison pipe. It's the common name. Lovely. So you, can, you can understand this. Not it's not called a parachute. It resembles a parachute. That's a very small example of it now. You <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> the smaller thing I found over there is the exact same thing. Um, so in terms of m method, you know, I mean, uh, we, we will probably come away uh, from this course quite confused with lots of names and so on. Yeah. But in, in, uh, what, what I kind of, from, from my, my previous uh, uh, mushroom walk that I came away from is, is more like the, the method that you're, you're also kind of talking us through. Yeah. Uh, the, um, with, with a book, how, how to use one of those books and, and to... Mm. So it's, it's down to observing and then have, have, having the vocabulary of like, like scavy and uh, yeah. uh, flaky and uh, all of that. Right, um, I suppose if I needed things to bring so it would have been some kind of a key. I don't have any with me. Uh -huh. Well, this one has a key in it, I'll write but the key being like like the register there in the, in the, in, at, the, at the end of the, or the, the, the beginning no, of the No, the key would be at the beginning, so the beginning, like, yeah, yeah. you'd have number one and it would say, um, cap over five centimeters, cap under five centimeters. So if it's over five, you go to number 17, if it's under five, you stay at number oh, two, okay. that kind of way. So you walk down, it's always a splitting kind of branch in two. So yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yeah, no. Like a flow church uh, yeah. organization. So finally yeah. you get down to maybe a group of some kind of species you can identify from that. No. This one does have a very basic key, I think, in the beginning. Yeah, it does. So like you have number one shape, skin like something, sometimes curled up. Um, edges flattened on wood or earth. So that's what this one here was, the, um, was the post here. So not so much this one, no, but the other one we found a while ago. It was flat. Mm -hmm. I don't what it looked like. Yeah. So it wasn't a mushroom shape, it was like a bit of skin on the wood. That'd be something, that's called resupinate. Mm -hmm. So this is a different thing we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. So that's a resupinate fungus. Resupinate means flat and attached to the branch, so it doesn't form a mushroom, it just stays like this. So you'd say, if this was what you're looking at, you'd say, all right, it is skin-like. So it's not bracket-like, it's not finger-like, it doesn't look like cauliflower. It's not spherical, it's not bowl-shaped, it's not umbrella-shaped, right? And it, the only one that's left is the supermat. So then you go to page 190, and you'd have a look at the supermat. I don't think this exact species is going to be in the book. But I'll go there anyway, just for the sake of it. And do most books have keys? Or? Yeah. Phillips doesn't. Phillips is more a visual thing, so just mm -hmm. keep flicking through it. Mm -hmm. do you, can you recommend a book with a good key in it? Um, yeah, there's one called Mushrooms and Fungi of Britain and Ireland. 
Yeah. Sorry, then Google or else right in the bookshop you'll find it. Yeah. So in, in terms of ecology, what, what's the difference then between lichens and, and, and mushrooms? Right. A lichen is a symbiosis between a fungus and an algae. So what it does is, if you'd imagine, if I had a solar panel and I wanted to make energy, I'd be holding up my panel like this. So I'm the fungus and the panel is the algae. So the fungus is holding up the algae, it's making sugar, it's giving some to the fungus. So the fungus is just like scaffolding for holding the algae. Because the algae couldn't survive if it was on its own, unless it was in water. Mm -hmm. So also what the fungus creates is a very kind of moist environment. So the algae is more or less it's living in a nice environment, it's using photosynthesis to make energy and then giving some of the energy to the fungus. So it's symbiotic. Yay, for lunch, guys. <laughs> you want to share? So this is a thing called a deceiver. Deceiver? Yeah, this is Lacaria and Lacaria. Yeah, it's edible. So people often use these in raw, they have it raw in salads, because it looks quite nice. I imagine if you cook it, it shrivels up a bit. Mm. It just looks nice as a kind of a decoration, if not for taste alone. Um, it's called the deceiver because it often looks like other things. So they can be very deceiving when you try to identify them. Right, this might be a good one to explain why some people call the deceiver the deceiver. So the deceiver could look similar to this. I don't know if somebody has one. Has anybody got a yeah, deceiver? This lady has a deceiver. Yeah. I see one of them. <laughs> well, superficially, I suppose they're quite similar. And they've, they've got the striations on the cap. You can yeah. see they're different colours altogether, but often the deceiver can be so pale it can look just like this. This is actually a mycena, so it's a different exception to the rule mycenas are small. This is quite big if you look at it. I think it's a thing called mycena pura. I don't think it has a common name, but it's got a really bad smell. It's a really. I don't know, it's a, I won't tell you. Have a smell inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a really strong smell anyway. Is it edible? No. no. It's just not edible because, I'd say, because of the smell and the taste. It's not that it's dangerous. So it wouldn't matter too much if you confused it, but you'd probably be eating your meal and you'd be like, oh, yeah. I've got a funny taste. Could something. you confuse any deceivers with something dangerous? Do you? Um, well, there's some cartonarius, the web caps, that look like this, except they don't have pink gills. Oh. Cartonarius always has brown gills, and the gills are different, but from the top, Again, you could, you could confuse it, because yeah. the deceiver can be so variable in colour, shape, size. But the gills look different between this and the cartoon area. This is great, even if you just learn one, you're sorted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Did you like Try it. Like? You're going to eat it now. Well... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till you go home. So, <laughs> so you don't feel responsible. <laughs> if you eat a really, really poisonous mushroom, how long before you die? Oh, what a question! Yes, yes, it's, a, it's a horrible way to go, like some of the, the death cat now. Mm. That's got toxins in it that mm. don't affect you till 24 hours later. But what's happening once you've eaten it is that it goes into your liver and your liver can't deal with it. It's damaging your liver, your liver cycles it somewhere else, comes back to your liver, it's damages so it again. Yeah. Keeps going around until it kills off your liver and then it gets the other organs. So oh my God. Yeah. Your kidneys and stuff get, go as well. So often people, they're on dialysis. You can be on dialysis for the rest of your life sometimes, like if you catch it in mm. time. But other times then it just... It cycles into your blood through all your organs till finally it just stops your heart. So you die of a slow, painful death of all yeah. the gills that are along the cap. It's a funnel in this particular type of... So a funnel is Clytosabe. That's the genus name. And this particular funnel is a really nice one. I've been finding it a lot. It's kind of late in the season. It's called Clytosabe nebularis. So it's like a nebula. So if you look at the top, it looks like a night sky. You get a dark background with kind of white spots. So it looks like a starry sky. So it's a nice one. You'll be able to remember it as well. Thing called Clytosby nebularis. What's the question? I don't know if it has a common name. And is it edible? No, it's not edible. Okay, there's of ecosystem quality, so lots of grasslands, if they have lots of wax caps, it's a good grassland that hasn't been fertilized, hasn't been ploughed. So they say if you plough a grassland or fertilise it, it can take 20 years before these fellas can grow again. These wax caps? Yeah, yeah wax caps, so the cap feels waxy, it's awful like the bottle cap. I might as well take a photo of them. So this is a really nice one. Are they edible or? Lots of the wax caps are protected by law, so you can't Great. take them anywhere. Yeah. So, here, no. <laughs> so here we have a jelly fungus, it's called Colossal viscosa. I don't think it has a common name. Well, it's called a coral fungus. It looks like yeah, a bit of coral like reef, can you yeah. imagine? Yeah. Yeah. So it's really nice, isn't it? Mm. What it's doing is it's, it's amazing decomposer, color. so it's decomposing mm. this old bit of this coniferous woodland here. Mm. In, in, in German, I know this is Hallimash. Um, mm. But um, I don't, what's the English word? Colossera. Well, the Latin Colossera. name. Uh -huh. Colossera. Can you eat it? 
No. <laughs> there wouldn't be much in it anyway. Just, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, for, just, for, just for texture alone. Like. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It looks a bit like the thing you were looking at. <laughs> <laughs> the slug is eating yeah, a yeah, fly Yeah, fly The reason it's called a fly gower is because people in the past used to, you mash it up in a plate with some water and sugar. Yeah. Flies come along, eat the sugar, and they get the toxins oh. as well. So you have a. a have a natural fly trap, really. Is that the ah, same very as good. the one with the spots on it? Yeah, yeah. That it would have, yeah. It would have had spots at one point, but that's an old specimen. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. What is it? A fly, fly agaric. Fly agaric. Poisonous, is it? Yeah. That oh. slug at the moment is in a point where he believes that there is a direct connection between the external... <laughs> <laughs> He's moving so slowly. Yeah. <laughs> and we are Should nothing but, we are nothing but we are nothing but spirits. Eat the slug. <laughs> the slug. What would happen if you eat the slug? Yeah. The slug would be a concentration of the compounds. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's what the slug wow. thinks at, at this very moment. So fly fly agaric. Fly agaric. Oh. So that's a... Uh, it's also a hallucinogen. Normally it has white spots on it. It has a magic mushroom. <laughs> it is a type of magic mushroom. But <laughs> no, that's even... That's it's not an edible this, one. This one it's it's occupied anyway. Can then <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> So that's it can it. be poisonous as well, eh? As well, I think so, yeah. That's what they have a list in this book anyway. Yeah. It's poisonous. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want to know how to use it.